Welcome to Soccer we like it, the Man United right on the channel for United and football fans, the biggest and best fan channel in the United States. Joining us today, we are talking with United farming blanks at Sellers Park. People see it's an improvement, people think it's an absolute demise and absolutely poor football from United. Joining us today from the UK, I have the analyst, Dim. Welcome to the show. Hey guys, how you all doing? We have Richard, Hi, Richard. Mr. Strict, also joining us from UK. How's it going? Here representing the US, we have our global ambassador, Devin. Hello, hey Devin, mate. How are hey, you? Devin. And Houston Red Army's representative is Mr. Soulman, the Mr. Positive. Welcome to the show. Right. Well, fellas. Crystal Palace, nil. Manchester United, nil. Last season, we got destroyed 4 0 and obliterated last season. This season, we destroyed them but could not put the ball in net. A lot of people have said it was poor. United, uh, it was all 10 hugs, not for but. People failed to see. I see the positives. I thought the football was better. I thought they, they played and just could not finish. I'm going to start with Mr. Strict. Richard, where did you see where things were wrong or what was your take on that quickly? Yeah, that's a good question. So my take overall is that the defence this season has improved. There's no doubt about that. One good take. Yeah, the addition is late of the late definitely improved our defence. There's starting to be a bit more cohesion between him and Martinez at the back. Apart from the Liverpool game, I think they've looked pretty good, both of them. Um, we are playing better at times. Um, we had more control of the game when Xerxes, Ahmad and Ericsson. Uh, Ericsson were on the pitch, yeah. They, we had a lot more control, a lot more intricate passing. Uh, the technical ceiling, the technical level of football was higher. But then Ten Hag made some interesting substitutions. Um, so he brought on <laughs> brought on Rashford, he brought on Hoyland, and who else was the third one? Uh, it was Ugarte, but Ugarte. Ugarte, so, so let, let's leave him out of the equation. But when those substitutions were made, we we we, we failed to hold on to the ball. Bruno resorted to hoof ball, you know, treating the ball like a grenade, and that's when we lost all control. Um, so my gripe is that we're struggling to put chances to bed. We're creating chances, but we're struggling to finish, right? So that's the, that's the issue. But more importantly, my issue is that when things are not going our way, we resort to this style of football where we're just launching aimless passes. We're not we're, we're not sticking to the system, you know. We start panicking and launching aimless passes, and we lose control. And that's what we did for the last. 30 minutes of the game at least uh, that's what i noticed all right let me go to let me go to us Devin, what was your take mr globetrotter what did you think i mean when you saw that first half compared to the second half i mean were you upset of the chances created? did you not see a, an abundance what was your take of chances created it, compared? It, it seemed to me it seemed to me like yeah we were playing some beautiful football thank you first half the the biggest issue of all was that we happened to just go up against an ex-United keeper. And we all know how that goes when they play against United. And yeah. Henderson was just in phenomenal form. Um, there were a couple of wasteful chances. I think it was, was it Xerxes had a free header that he put wide? Um, I think Delic had one as well too. But I mean, it was just, it was more, it was more so about just, we didn't finish our chances and Henderson was just, was phenomenal. That doesn't take away that Onana as well was phenomenal as well too. That, that double save, that double save was double yeah, save. That, that, that's up there for one of the saves of the season. Because every, everybody was going on about Raya's double save um, in in uh, Champions League. Onana's that that was better than that. Um, but it's it just seemed like we just got frustrated with missing chances. The other thing that I started to get frustrated with, and I don't know if anybody else um, queued up on this was. Did you notice that Bruno Fernandes was start trying to get a little cheeky with a little outside the 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 foot passes when you could have played simple at a couple of chances? Yeah, yeah, and it yeah, seemed as though that when they started trying that is when it's like it kind of just started going downhill. And it went from trying to play smart to all of a sudden it was like Bruno was treating the ball as if it was a freaking grenade, just getting yeah. as far away from as possible as he could go. Oh uh, yeah. But yeah. I mean, there there were a lot of promises to go with, and it's happy to see um more than anything else. Ten Hag was actually rotating the team. Mm. So at least we're seeing improvements in that part. Right. But we'll see if it continues. And I don't know if he had Wednesday in mind for his lineup, but it's saying something when um, Ericsson is putting a name for himself to be back in that starting 11. Right. Okay. So 
from Mr. Strict and the Globetrotter, we have seen positive vibes from both of you. you. You've seen the positive. When I did the poll, I just opposed to some people in some WhatsApp chats who were just, they're on another level. I think most of them are delusional, so I, I'm not surprised. They said they want this guy sacked tomorrow. Like, are you, are you're you talking about United Road? No, 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 no. I'm talking about, I'm talking about some United forums I'm in, and those guys, well, they are. They, they're, they're in today's, treatment. Today, today's day and age, it's uh, instant FC. Everybody wants instant results on everything in the it second. Don't like that. It does like not they, work they like don't, that. They don't. Um, they want to immediately pull go nuclear option. As I told, like that, I, I've told everybody right now, my my take is still Ten Hag has earned himself until Christmas. Right. And if you can see uh, some where we're going by that point, then yes, okay, let him continue in this season. If not, then you really have to start looking. And I still have I still have this this theory. I can't prove it yet. That, that's part of the reason why Van Nistel is there right now. But we'll see. You know what? Let me go to Vim, the analyst. Vim, your take. Yesterday's game, United... The, the, um, the, I'm the glad you joined. I'm counts. glad you guys... Yeah. I'm glad you guys enjoyed the game. I didn't enjoy it that much. Um, I'm sorry to hear that. I thought... Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was okay. Look, you know, we kept possession. We kept them from having the ball, which is always a, a good strategy to stop them scoring. Um, they look like a different team without Michael Elise. But mm -hmm. what I was seeing was that we look devoid of patterns of play. We we looked like we were stringing a few passes together, but we didn't seem to play with any kind of um, real style. Like I couldn't see what we were trying to do with the ball. We were just just trying to keep the ball just for the sake of keeping it. I couldn't see how we were, you know, a couple of instances when we did get the ball quickly forward and Ganacho and Ahmed had a, a quick shot away. But generally, I just felt like we were playing it safe, going back and letting the centre-backs have the ball um, to play safe. And I saw that quite a lot, that the ball was coming back a lot. Um, and, I, and I just felt like, you know, the way you watch, when you watch other teams, Liverpool and, and City, they play with some kind of incisive passing, like the uh, the fullbacks or the wingbacks are making a run as soon as one player in midfield picks it up and they will make that div div divisive pass. I didn't see that. Um, and I just thought we're just trying to avoid losses by keeping possession. In the first for half, me, you mean? I think. Or the second half? Uh, for me, it was pretty much, well, the second half was even worse, actually. And yes, I, the, the substitution did not help. Uh, Ahmad and mm. Garnacho, especially Ahmad, was pretty good with, with possession. Bruno had a really bad game. But for me, I'm not seeing enough development in this game at the moment. And I'm hoping that it will happen where we start to play with some intent, where we try to break teams down quickly. And uh, we do it so, so slowly that by the time we compress them back into their third, they're defending with 10, 11 players. Right. So well, got, you're you know, saying we are the slow in the build-up. I'm, I'm saying we're too slow and we're too passive and we're too safe. We get the ball and we just try and keep it just for the sake of keeping it. And I, I don't understand this um, style that Ten Hag is trying to implement because if it's just possession based on no goals and no intent and no cutting open teams, then where, where are we going to uh, improve as a team? Right. I'm not seeing it yet at the moment. I'm not, I'm not convinced. So okay. I wasn't that impressed. Let me go with Mr. Positive, if he has some positive vibes on this one. So, man, what's your take? We did the show yesterday. I mean, what was your take? Because we weren't going together. Hey, man, to say something like you did not see a hmm, style of play, a pattern, we were just holding the ball. No, this isn't, it's not like we saw these guys. You look at the possession stats. Yes, it's right there. Hmm. But that doesn't necessarily mean we were just passing the ball um, sideways. Like we were, we were, we were cooking, man. We were moving the ball very quickly. We were dominating. We were imposing our style of play on Crystal Palace. Crystal Palace did not get to play their game, absolutely at all. Even if it's the fact of just um, playing counterattacking football, which with which they were doing for large portions of the game, just sitting back. They had a back five almost damn near the whole game. Every time Ama got the ball, he was double, triple team. Yeah, two guys on him. You know, so but we were the dominant. We were the dominant ones, and it's just that we didn't finish our food. Listen, we were playing so well, we were so dominant that I felt like if even if we conceded a goal, we would still won the game two one, three one. 
You know, that's how confident I was about that game. I was very impressed with uh, the, the way we were playing yesterday. The only thing that was missing was goals. If we if we won that game, I swear down, you guys would you, – you, Vim and a lot of guys wouldn't be um, bringing up uh, certain things like that. I, I mean, you have to – Vim, if you want, we can watch the game together. I'll put it on, yeah, you know, on, on, on a particular <laughs> – yeah, form of media where Look, we can watch if, it together. Yeah, yeah, man. We need to watch yeah, that yeah. game together, bro. Because I, I don't understand yeah. how we did not see the same thing. There was I, a time if we'd converted, gone. If we'd converted yeah. and scored those goals, mm. I probably wouldn't be so critical. Right. But the fact is, is that we lose the impetus after we've had those chances, those missed chances. Right. And we always tend to rue them later on. Right. Which is what happened yesterday, and. Mm. We did not dominate after that. Um, you know, we had we had did, did, did we dominate, created you chances mean after the substitution or before the substitution. No, no, oh, I just think very once, key. I think I think we have lots of energy for certain portions of the game where we can make try and um, create something and attack their goal, and we did it a few times. You know, and Garnacho and Bruno had a chance on goal, and I don't know if Ahmed had a shot on goal, but we have it. We have it in moments in the game. And then we kind of lose that dominance. We lose that control. I don't think we dominate because you saw second half, especially that Crystal Palace had quite a few chances and they could have turned the game on its head. And I've seen this too many times before where we lose control of the game and we give it to the opponent and right. the opponent starts peppering us. Right. I think, I think there's an improvement from what we've seen last year, but I'm not seeing enough of it. So John, um, yeah, Joe, I'd be happy to watch a game with so, you. So, 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 <laughs> so, so let, let me, defensively, normally I, don't, normally I, I don't give my perspective, but after watching we, we that game, we strengthened defensively. We strengthened defensively we yesterday, a lot of money defensively. Yeah, I think yesterday, I thought, delict is key. Definitely, he's he's a very well, good player and well, he does help. Well, us. Well, I'm also helping. Euros back in the squad. Right, I I agree. Mm -hmm. I I I, I agree with everyone's yeah. views. I think. After watching that game yesterday, of, of the five games we played this season, of all five we played in the Premier League, I think this has the this was the one game I saw United putting an, a system in play to squeeze because there were times there was one period Palace did not even cross the halfway line. We were so in the half of the field, like this is not the, the Palace minutes. we played last season. They destroyed us 4-0 last yeah. season. This season. They were happy to leave that game with a point because I they were so. because and I saw what I saw yesterday was Man United trying to implement a style whereby we will hound you and close you down, forcing them as teams force us back. We were forcing them back, but the only problem I saw was the finishing, bad finishing. Okay, great saves and just unlucky. That's what I saw. If we had scored, I think the whole game would everyone's yeah. because a lot of people were upset. The reason why I noticed a lot of people upset, they saw it as a loss because of so much of control of the game and the chance. We don't we don't normally create that many chances in a game. We really don't. But we had chance. Ganacho had three, three chances, two in the first half, one hit the post, one great save, another great save by Anderson in the second half. Uh, Xerxes, one great save, one missed header. Uh, delete goods another head out from a set piece. Bruno, instead of using his left foot, decided to style it with a inside shot. I don't know what he was thinking. So, so the, we don't normally have this many chances that we create. Can I, can I, can I say yeah, something? To you? Yeah, it's all well to compress the team into their third. Yeah, but remember but when the chances, all... the chances ratio, we don't normally create that many. That's what I'm saying. We don't create that many. If you go back to so, the games we played, we probably scored, but we don't create. I, I hear I hear exactly what Vim is saying, and in a way I agree with it because like it doesn't matter if you have all that if you don't. Oh, definitely, without a doubt, without a doubt. Yeah. That's what I said. But if don't, we have scored, point out, point, so Tim, I just want to make a point here, right? Mm. It's, okay, it's okay to compress the team. That's good. Yeah. But if you compress the team into mm. the final third, how many mm. players have you got in that final third? I think you had about six or seven at the time. You've got yeah. twenty-one players there. Right. Because you, effectively, you're, you've compressed, you've gone. Delit and, and Lissandra Martinez are in that final third. So you've got right. 21 players in that final third. How are you supposed to break that down to score a goal if um, you know, you're not constantly peppering the ball uh, at the keeper, getting a striker to you know, constantly put shots in? We kept breaking up. 
not enough. We kept the play kept breaking down. So yes, we compressed them, but it's like we're not clinical like City or or a level where we just the constantly is shooting the at clinical, the keeper. Clinical. We were not clinical. Yes. So so the the fact is is that when we've got a wall in front of us of, of mm. all eleven players in front of mm. their goal defending, yeah. it's very mm. difficult for us to do that without, to, without to score that. a goal. Exactly. So what we might that. do is so what City do, they, they bring the play out and they bring the players towards them and then they set traps. They get they get their players to come the opposition to come out and then they attack, go in behind. And I didn't see enough of that. We're just compressing them, hoping that we're going to find a way in, way or unlock that defense. And we didn't. I think that sometimes you have to be able to be dynamic enough to bring the play out, to then um, create space in behind and then attack from that, that point. I don't know if that makes sense yeah, but oh, you've got to kind no, of pull them out and then attack. The, who has been responsible for the chances missed? Would you say that's the manager's fault or the players uh, missing those it's, chances? It's not, it's not the... Being clinical is definitely on the players. You know, Xerxes, I think he missed a couple of shots. Yes. Garnacho was on target. Yes. And he was unlucky to hit the post. Bruno was awful. <laughs> and, you know, it's going to take a little bit more practice for these guys to become more clinical. Right. But if we can't unlock a team by compressing them, then we have right. to change it slightly. And we didn't. Right. Richard. Yeah. Do you agree with Vim in terms of we possessed the possession, but we still could not, the play wasn't as, he's saying it's not fluid, that we're just going in there. We're not, yeah. we, we didn't change, like, okay, Vim's got this ain't working, come, move back, let them come to us. Vim's got a point. So we, we didn't have a lot of possession, but there was no, I didn't sense an urgency um, when we had that possession. You know, it was nice football. Like I said, you know, uh, Xerxes and, and um, what's his name, uh, Ericsson and Ahmad, you know, they, ke they kept the ball nicely at times, but what we what I was looking for really was that final penetration. No, did mm. Sorry. Um, sorry. Um, I was looking for that final penetration into the, into the box score. We didn't have enough of that. Right. You know, um, and it's been a pattern all season. We, we, we really, really like that clinical edge. And mm. um, Tuesday or was it Wednesday when we played Barn Barnsley, we saw glimpses of what we can be right. if we were to take our chances and be ruthless. Right. So yes, it's Barnsley. So so don't 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 get too hung up on the fact that I said Barnsley. But <laughs> I know where this team can go if we you know play more aggressive football and take our chances. But right. yesterday there was a bit of a passive element, you know, pass it side to side have a little bit of nice touches here and there, but nothing that will be like, yes, edge. Edge. yeah, there's no cutting edge. And, and that's what we need. And that's what we've lacked all season. Um, but there were some good passages of play, but I'm still unconvinced by um, our overall tactical okay. self and this manager. Let me all ask you, Vim, on the, the whole of United's play, the whole match, what would you score United's performance yesterday on a scale of 1 to 10? Just the score 1 to 10. No, just the score. Uh, probably a six. Six. Joe. I'm sticking with my same score from yesterday. Eight out of ten. And I know I'm being, you know, uh, Christmas time, but I'm just, I was happy to see that, man. Everything except for the goal, I was happy to see what I saw. Richard, scale of one to ten. Six. Six. Devin. I have to give it a 6.5. 6.5. I'll give it and a that's heavily, And that is heavily favored because of the defense. Right. I give it a 7. So 6 being average, uh, generously, uh, Joe giving an 8. I gave a 7. Had we scored? So Vim and Richard, had we scored, what would the score? What would the, if we had won the game, taking three points, say 1-0, would, would you have given a higher score? Yeah, I would have given 7. Mm -hmm. Vim? I would, I would, uh, I would, and um, it really annoys me when we keep uh, fluffing our chances. Yeah, we, because yeah. we don't create enough of them, yes. we need to be able to take them. Yes, and when we don't take them, it's we frustrating. lose that momentum. Yes, and the, and the play, the players lose a little bit of hope as well. I can see it because yes. they start getting frustrated that we're yes. not getting the, mm. the ball into the back of the net. Yes, Dean Henderson made some amazing saves. 
and he's he's trying to I don't know what he's trying to do. He's trying to prove himself <laughs> that look, you let me go, I'm going to punish you. I know. Uh, right. I he's know. an excellent keeper. I I think he did did a much better job than Onana. Although Onana didn't have to make as many saves. Um, but we've got to take our chances. We've got to finish the game off. When we had that control in the first half, we've got to finish it. We lack that killer instinct. Right. So, in in the past, we've not created that many, and we've failed. So it's now like now we've created Molo, and we're still failing. So, are we going to say is the players not finishing, or is it the tactics is still on the manager not telling them what to do? No, it's on the players. It's on that. That's on the players because the chances, the opportunities are being created. But if the player is in that right position and does not put it on frame, um, I can't see you blame Ten Hag for that. Right. Now, where I see this going is um, if it continues, I think they're going to start looking at Van Nistelrooy more because it's kind of like if there's that's any money, but but my however. <laughs> But let me, let me finish with this one. My rebuttal to that will be, I have a hard time believing that Van Nistelrooy is not teaching them what to do when they're in that correct position, especially when, as a player, I can't think of more lethal players, especially inside the box, than him. So, to me, it's still on the players if they don't finish those chances. Right. Richard, follow up on that, please. Play up. Or manager, who's responsible for the lack of clinical, the lack of clinical finishing at the United? We don't score a lot, but the day we yeah. do create, and I hope this may long continue, but we continue creating, we are not still putting teams to the to the sword. Okay, so if it's like if it's like not being lack of clinical, it's, it's players. Well, this is a systemic thing. Yeah. So I'm not going to isolate this to one game. I'm going to give. I'm going to you know look at. The whole picture and, and look at Ten Hag's tenure. Mm. Tuesday mm. was the only day game where we'd scored more than four goals in the whole of Ten Hag's ever. Yeah, under him. So, so this is this is a systemic thing. You know, we 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 don't really score many goals under this coach. If we if we'd been scored if if we'd historically scored goals under this coach, now I say yes, it's hundred percent the players. But when I look at the, the raw facts, we do not score goals. We was a negative goal difference last season. This season in the Premier League, I'm just talking about the Premier League, we're struggling to score goals. So I'm afraid it's the coach at the top. Vim, okay. let's uh, quickly welcome Mr. Mr. Fortress representing the UK crew. Welcome to the show, Ken. Yes, um, good to have you. Um, thanks for having me on board. I'm just trying to... Sort out my laptop. No I, worries, no worries, no um, worries. Can you, take, you take care of that, take care of that. Vim, what was your take on the lack of clinical finishing? Are we saying it's the players or the coach? Um, probably a combination of both. Right. Um, if you don't create enough chances throughout the season, then you're not giving your players enough of a chance right. to become more clinical. Right. So if you have these moments in games where... Okay, you get um, you, you get the run of the game and you create more chances and then you have a chance to score a goal. But some games you have no control and you don't have any chances. Your strikers tend to become stale. Mm. And I feel that we're just clutching at random chances. I don't feel that sometimes the players know what to do. Like when the player receives the ball, he's just looking for someone else to pass to. There doesn't seem to be like a shape where they all seem to know where everyone is. Yes, Ahmed is there on the right and Ganoj is there on the left and we know those are two outlets. But it feels like when people pick up the ball in from defence or from midfield, it doesn't always feel like um, there's a there's this formation that they need, they know that is always going to be, um, you know, there's going to be someone there to receive the ball. They're just looking for someone. Who can I pass to? Who can I pass to? And it seems kind of a little bit rushed. Um, and the other thing as well, our, when the other team is attacking, our formation is all over the place, which is why we've been conceding a lot of goals as well, that our back four don't seem to remain in a line or the, the midfield don't seem to maintain a shape. You see lots of other teams like Villa and um, Brentford that when the opposition is attacking, they fall into this this shape of 4-4-2 or whatever it is they 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 need to do out of possession. Our team doesn't do it. It's kind of we're all over the place. We're lopsided, right. and then there's confusion. Like who's going to mark this guy? Who's going to mark this guy? 
I, I, I just seeing a little bit of disorganization still. There's a lot of disorganization right. in and out of possession. Hmm. Okay. So yes, it's on the players, but the system does not help, and the, the shape does not help. Joel, <clears throat> players or coach, who's responsible for the lack of clinical finishing in this team? But I would like to point out that hmm, our shape has led to three straight uh, clean sheets in the league. Okay. That said, um, all the manager can do is put out the uh, tactics uh, for the players to be successful. The players would have been successful on Saturday if they finished their food. It's just that it's it's plain and simple. I don't understand in what other dimension of reality, right, do you as a manager, right, provide your employees, right, the necessary tools and you've trained and drilled them, right? They get the ability to do that and they fall short and somehow it's your fault. It's like, okay, okay. But these guys are supposed to be professionals though, right? Mm -hmm. These guys are footballers. They're supposed to finish those. And all it is, is the, the strategy has to give them the opportunity to do so. I, I hear what you're saying, Vim, as far as like the shape, right? But I can't, I can't, I, I can only go by results and our our current shape has led to us looking um very good defensively and at least over the last two games right we've looked very good offensively so right now I am a fan that is satisfied with the shape the defense the uh, progressive football all I'm doing is waiting for the goals that's it all that's right. all I'm doing Okay, Joe. Let do you me think, bring do you think we had a good shape against? Do you think we have a good shape against Liverpool then, when they beat us three 0 No, no, but like, of, well, of course, uh, you know that's Liverpool. There's, there's there's levels to this stuff, right? Obviously, uh, when it comes to teams like that, we have to uh, change our strategy a little bit. But if we, I feel like after yesterday's game and the last three games, we are on a upward trajectory, right? We are in a forward moving trajectory, and I'm here to say. I'm I'm here to be like, hey, let's see where we go with this, right? right? Because I, I feel like we're going forward. I don't feel like we're stagnant or going backwards. Well, I, I feel like the team has been going forward the last... Well, that's uh, why they call him Mr. Positive. You not, Now you guys see what... It, it ain't about that. being positive. It's about being just like realistic of expectations of what you right. demand from certain people. Like, right. you know, we, we talk about mentality. Well, yeah, this is the same team, right? We still have a lot of mental... You know weakness in this team, like you, you can't, you can't deny that, right? right? Okay. Why are we, why are we pretending like the the issues that we had or we have had the last three, four years before Eric Ten Hag, it's all over the sudden supposed to magically uh, disappear once the, uh, the the beginning of the season uh, starts. We are mentally weak, but I thought I even thought as mentally weak as I think we are, I thought we did a pretty decent job on Saturday maintaining and sustaining the pressure on Crystal Palace. Those guys, we had them choked out. And like the their entire plan was to do a smash and grab, get out of their half and try to nick one in. The essay miss, that was what that team, that was what Chelsea, um, uh, Crystal Palace yes. had been planning for the entire time, right? That 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 miss that essay had, even though it seemed like uh, Onana would have had it anyway, he had coverage. But it seemed like that was their strategy. So, what last season? Well, we lost this game. Definitely. This season, we didn't lose the game and we dominated. Right. I call that progress. It may not be the amount of progress that you want. I get that. It's not the amount. I'm not satisfied with this amount of progress. I don't want us having this kind of games, having these kind of stats, and not being able to win. But I, you Gold gotta, you gotta look at, yeah, you gotta look at the nuance, man. Wow. Okay, thank you, Joe. Let me go to Mr. Fortress. Uh, Ken, yesterday's game, United dominated, took all the chances, could had created more than average chances, combining most games this season, but could not finish. Is that the player, or is that on the structure and the manager? Well, where do I start? Um, personally, I don't see any progress. And I'm going to be up front. I don't see any progress. I think we played against a woeful Crystal Palace side um, that basically lost all their best players last season. So this Crystal Palace side, you know, people are saying 
that last season we would have lost. And yes, last we season... Got we got beaten 4-0 home and away. Yeah, yeah. But if we look at the players at Crystal Palace, the players that actually well, hurt us it, in that Who did they lose besides Olise? Wait, let me finish. The players that, that, that actually hurt us in that game, most of them are not AZ. there. AZ and Olise. AZ still Olise. there. He Olise. had Olise, a chance. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, Olise. But let's face it. The team we played against um, yesterday is not the team that we played last season. The team okay. that we played last season is a million miles better. This team haven't have they even won a game this season? I don't think they have. Where Do you know what I mean? Where so, are Crystal Palace in the table at the moment? Isn't it seven? I think they're seven. I think they're sixteen. But but you also got to remember the time of the season we played them is also it also varies. We played Crystal Palace late December and March April. Compared okay, to so let, let them me, in yeah, they have, you know they haven't lost a game this season, right? They yeah, lost, let me, we've let me, lost guys, two. guys. Let's let's summarize. This is Manchester United's football club. We're not. Mm-hmm. We're not. We're not. You know, we 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 beat we've beaten two championship sides to, since we since we lost we lost three 0 to Liverpool. We haven't. There's no comeback. All right. There's absolutely oh. no comeback. So there's no from as far as I see it, this guy mm-hmm. has is he's pulling he's pulling a wall over people's eyes and they're not okay. seeing it. And that's that's the, that's the fact of it, you know. We right. we played a very very poor Crystal Palace side. We should have taken them to the cleaners. Right. They're not playing well, and that's that's what we do. We match teams. When teams are good, we try to we try to step it up. When teams are bad, when we should be taking them to the sword, we, we, we don't. So, so why uh, who, who was to blame for the we, the me not beating them yesterday? Who would do but, all this? Possible? Yeah, I, I'm I'm getting to that. If you look okay. at the game, who created the clear? You know, if we talk about clear cut ch- chances we didn't actually cr- create clear cut chances let's face it we did not if you look at the chances crystal palace had compared with uh the, the chances we had, they actually had the best chances in the game so it's not like we we cut them open you know the, let's look at the garnacho one is a through ball yes he should have scored he didn't score that's on him yeah but in terms of progressive football like Working and opening up and the opposition, Crystal Palace did that so many. Well, the, the two again. So when, the, if you look at the end of the first half, people were saying we could have been two 0 up, but Crystal Palace could have been one 0 up as well. Remember when Mitchell went down the back byline, the left back cut back, squared it up um, to Eze, which is something that normally kills us every time when someone uh, squares the ball. Open mm-hmm. goal, he missed. Yeah, second half the same thing. So for me. People are gonna people are gonna think, oh, we're making progress. We make until we play a good team, and then we'll oh, see that. So, okay. so oh, we have Spurs miles. on. We have Spurs on Sunday. Next Sunday, this right. time we will have played Spurs, and we'll have a different perspective. Are we gonna say Spurs are a championship team? If we say we beat, because I hope we beat Spurs. If we beat Spurs, would that change your mind? I'm just saying. I will give credit where credit is due. It, I'll give I credit where credit is due, huh? but I won't. I, I won't. won't. Yeah, I you're won't. right. You won't. You know that you won't I because won't. this guy, this manager we have, is, is, uh, you know, like people. You want him gone? You want him gone? Yeah, absolutely. As because he's gone. This, we're not, you want him not, gone now? You want him gone now? Now, if I can like, get him out yesterday, I, look at the starting lineup yesterday. Look at the starting lineup yesterday. If people are saying, "Oh, yeah, we dominated. We played a poor Palace team." Let's face it. That's the fact. Palace didn't turn up. Second half. When 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 Palace realised that oh yeah you know what we we've actually not got this right let's change it up second we were clueless second half when we took off Xerxes who was holding play whether we front. took him off whether we took him no, off I, we I disagree off. I disagree second half did we, okay did we play well in the second half no did we play well? when exactly. when, when no. we changed when we brought those three subs it's clear they made yeah, no impact. the subs did not work yeah they okay. did not let's, work okay. at all okay let's yeah it didn't work yeah but let's look at what happened before the subs came up did we play well. Yeah. Yes. We, we, yeah. Yeah. But we we huffed and puffed, right? We didn't we didn't play well, guys. Let's face it. Notice how you like you just like creating no, like but... different adjectives for what it is. Like we huffed and puffed. No, we saying... played well. We played well and we dominated that team. Did we and play well and dominate that team? We played. Were we the better team at the end at reg- at the at the half? Were we, we the better well, team? We played well. Did not finish our chances. And Anderson played brilliant. Nah, that's I don't pretty think much the best way well, to be. So, so we didn't. So, so, we didn't so, dominate hold on, hold on, that hold on. team. Let 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 uh, uh, Ken finish. So Henderson I, saves. He's I'm straight up watching the game. Did that change? Did that change the game with Henderson making great saves? Did that change anything? I think I think it took some of the morale out of the team. 
I, I think so where it's like, yeah, we can't beat this keeper today. Like, like I think because we, we, all, we all know a lot of our players are still mentally weak. Like, nobody here is going to disagree on that. Yeah, but Devin, how long are we going to keep saying this? This guy's, it's practically the, the whole team's his team now. So when, when are we going to stop saying this? Well, it's, again, so I'm, the jury's still out on the new signings that came in. But there's wow. still a lot of players who are in this squad who we know are not the best. They're um, mentally mental, mental fortitude. But if we look at the team, that's so, and, and, right? I, and, I'll, and I'll highlight, team. I'll highlight, I'll highlight one player in particular who Bruno. I was actually, I'm going to say this because normally I support Rashford. him. I have to call it out, Bruno, 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 decision, Bruno's Bruno's decision making and frustration. Yeah, it was so. clear to see in the game yesterday. Like, why are you sitting there trying, as I said before, trying cheeky, fancy passes? What a simple pass will do the trick, and then getting frustrated and then just playing long ball FC instead of trying to go back to how it was. And that, <laughs> and that's the captain of the team as well. You know what it is yeah. that annoys me the right. most about um, Bruno? But, but I want to. I want to go back. I want to okay. go. I'm sorry. Go, ahead, as go well ahead. With this. Go I want to bring it back to Ken with this as well. So again, I hear. I hear exactly what you're saying. I, I agree. A lot of the players on this team now are Ten Hag signings. But until you get the mentality of right, who are the players who were there from the past? I don't know how much is going to change. Can I ask? Uh, can I ask a question on that? Yeah. If Ten Hag gets his full eleven of his choice, do you think we're going to see fantastic football? He has. He has, has not. He? Well, he hasn't. He hasn't. He hasn't. Yes. Bruno is not his choice. Rashford is not his Rashford choice. Rashford is not his no, choice. No, 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 no. Yeah. guys. But, but if you Bruno take captain, out all the people, he made no. But going back, Bruno going back to captain, last point. It, 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 look, yeah, everyone, has so, Bruno, everyone has Bruno a bad is game. Everyone has a bad game. I know he's playing against the past. Just bear with me a second. Bear with me a second. All of you, if Eric Ten Hag gets his full squad of his own choice the people that he wants which is almost he's almost there are we going to see the fantastic football that we've been all been waiting for for three years no start with you joe yes we will no i say yes i say yes we will because um he's not going to bring anybody that's going to be an issue in the locker room right which is something that he has had to deal with the last two uh two on um, three years, right? And um, he knows what kind of players he likes. He He's a disciplinarian. Uh, he knows he's going to bring in people that are not, uh, that, that, that are not too full of themselves, that they can't be um, received um, on criticism. You know, um, my, my whole thing is like the entire footballing world has decided this is the this is the manager that we are going to slander in the media and they, they're, they're just not up for it I think uh, there's a quality manager in him and I believe in what on uh, the project he's trying to put together he, I don't even like, think he's put, a manager on the chopping block right now in the Premier League I think there's another no, one. not even I Ooh. think there's another one Lopetegui David Moyes let me, let me already bring in. Oh my god. Oh, that's that a great question, Vim. That's a brilliant question that you've asked. Thank you. Uh, yeah, go on, uh, Rich. Go on. Yeah, the, the re I, I don't think he'll change at all because if you look at the players that he's brought in, uh, Martinez, Ajax, um, Maserari, uh, Bayern Munich, but he had uh, experience in the Dutch league. Uh, what's this guy? Malaysia, Dutch league. Yeah. Uh, I haven't seen, haven't seen him play. Hmm? Can we really count him yeah. in there? We really haven't seen I'm not really counting because, you know, people want to talk about his style of play. What I'm trying to say is the, the late Ajax, uh, Ericsson Ajax experience. Um, who else? Uh, Xerxes, Dutch league experience. All these players have some sort of education from the same league that Ten Hag's coming from, right? Um, he's bought his own team. I, I don't want to hear all this rubbish that he's not been backed. He has the majority of his own play, players that have had experience of playing the type of football that Ten Hag wants. Anthony is another one. And he's not doing it. He's simply not doing it. He's just I'm tired of people giving him excuses saying, oh you know, it's it's process, it's progress. Where are we in the league at the moment? Yes, it's only five games, but we're we're eleventh in the league. I didn't even know until this morning. We're eleventh in the league. We can't we can't keep on making excuses and accepting mediocrity and saying, oh you know we're, we're getting there. He, he's he's doing his job. We're still are we still? I don't know. I've not checked the table properly, but are we still negative in goal difference? No, we're at zero. We're at zero. Where were we last season? Negative. 
Okay, the season before, how many goals did we score all season? We scored about 48 goals. I don't goals. have that stat. I don't have those stats right yeah. now. So. The season before, we scored 48 <laughs> goals all season, right? So all this talk about Ten Hag not needing his own players, not having to deal with egos, he's, he's got rid of Sancho. The board have said, okay, Sancho can go. He's got rid of Ronaldo. All, all the issues that he was having, the board have backed him. They've given him extra money to spend to the value of 600 million in three seasons. We're still yet to see a defined style of play and we're still seeing the same excuses, still seeing the same results, still seeing the same tactical ineptitude, the same stubbornness. So why should he stay? Why should he so, stay? So are you are you saying you want him gone yes. now? Or are you going to give him to December? I would have I would have sacked him in the summer. Okay. After uh, the FA Cup, I don't I, I would have sacked him. So you would so, have had so, hold him. Okay, so you would have had hold him. Huh? You would have had hold him. I would have done it because he's he's not taking us anywhere. So so okay, now that there's a new structure in play. A new operational structure, right? New operational. David Stephen said they have a new set piece coach. They said they put one in place now, right? So, don't you think five games is a bit early to let everything play I, out? I want to. I want to go. I want to go next one. Going back to the I want. I if this is till December, I think early, this, yes, my my cutoff early. is guys, December thirty first. December thirty first. Why? Why December? Why right off the season? Because so, it's like when you buy, it's just like when you employ a, a bunch of new people in your, in your office. Well, it's, we, let me, let me, I, I, want, I want this one. I, you, I want to get on this. Hold on, let Devin speak, man. Let Devin come. No, no, hold on. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me make a quick interruption. It's like we all work. The company just employed new employees in new positions. They've given the company a new budget. They've set the task. Obviously, it's not going to be a five-week task, a five-week goal. They do give us at least three months, regardless, across board, professionally, in any work of life. At least they give you three months. So would they judge us after four weeks of um, working? No. Like, exactly. No, no, they will. So, they will no, no, yes, you. they will. No, they will. No, 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 I'll tell you why. No, 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 they, they will. will. They will. They've been for three years and you've been underperforming. They, there they, you they go. Will. That's what I was going to say. That's yes. what I was going to say. Yes, yeah. I agree. But when I said a whole new structure, the whole new uh, managers and directors are employed us <laughs> new. Some of us have been there probably a few years. They now say, okay, the, what you've done before, we're going to put a whole new structure in front of you. All your demands were said, you need you need there. You need you want an assistant secretary, you need a, a, a junior project manager, you need a, a different project coordinator. They're going to give us that at least three months. To get so the to, to, can I answer your question? Then? Not after five. I, answer, well, sorry, I, I, I want to get friends. Yeah, de yeah, David. Let me just answer Tim quickly. You, what you made a valid point. However, if there's a handover from the previous re regime, mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm. and the, the handover is that, that transition. This particular, this particular, um, um, uh, I don't know, manager, when he goes on a call with a client, he has the tendency of derailing a contract, or he has the tendency of raising his voice and putting the client off. Mm. And you have a new regime coming in, mm. and mm. that that handover, that information mm. has been passed on mm. to this new regime. Right, that has to be taken into consideration. If yes. you're coming in as, a, and you're going to think, okay, yes, I'm going to put in structure. The, the mm. previous re regime mm. they didn't have, maybe they didn't have the tools to be able mm. to do a, a nice fancy yes. PowerPoint presentation, and mm. you had to use Excel, for example, or whatever. Mm. Um, Instead of you, Power you, BI, yeah. yeah, or Power BI or Power Automate, one of those ones. Uh, but then this new regime are willing to give him all the, the tools to do that. However, yeah. there's a character flaw where he, he has a tendency of just <laughs> being rude on the court. Right. That's you're gonna still you're still gonna get rid of him. You're no, no, you, go, you okay, take the well, notes yeah, and you give him coaching. You you give him no and give him that listen. We've seen but your when character you know flaw. We give you yeah, we've seen your character we've seen your character flaw. This is not gonna work for our ethos of the company. So you have we're giving you up to this time to fix it. Not five weeks. That's the way I see it. Devin, come on in. Okay. All right. So go back to Vim's question now. Um, I would still probably say we would not see that much of a change in style of play of what whatever it is that we're doing right now. Right. Um, with that being said, Ten Hag also did come into a club that was a mess when you look at the board structure. That board structure is pretty much in place right now. 
completely. So I still, I he still did. argued, I still said this from um, the FA Cup. He had until Christmas if he was properly backed to actually make a decent impact at it. But even if he does survive past Christmas at that point, I am still of the belief that if we do not finish in the Champions League, either by finishing top four winning your belief, then he has to go. Mm, I agree. So, but my 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 sentiment has still not changed from that. And I still think it's too early in the season to be making a change like like you guys. That's what I'm saying. It's too it because, early. because like I said, we now we now I'm still, trying to tell I, I, I want to see him with a couple it's months. Too early. I, I want to see him with a couple months with the proper board structure, everything in place first. And to me, Christmas is the right time to do it. Because exactly. no I, and so because you still have time to let him get his players, new players acclimated, everything like that. And then um if God forbid something goes wrong with the season, then you still have time to salvage them in the remainder of the season. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I I just think the timing. I see Mr. Fortress and Mr. Strict are e eager to let him go tomorrow. I just, which I think so. You now have bring in a new manager. I know you guys are not thinking of Ruud van Nistelrooy. You bring a new manager who's got a bunch of new players he's not even used to, and it will, it will, in the January say, "I need some new players." So I would say we've just. Spend so much money in the transfer window. Can we but at slot, least get slot, a free month? Can we get Liverpool a free manager month? hasn't signed anyone though, has he? The Liverpool manager and who hasn't does he need to sign? He already has a full team, a functioning team. We, we've we've got a functioning. Functioning. he has a championship no, team. No, no, no. We our have. team was dysfunctional. I was. Dysfunctional. He has a championship team and a functional. He's a he has the a fun, he walked into a functioning machine football club. Exactly. He walked into a functioning football okay. club. When when you go into the, 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 you understand how management works, right? Workflows, uh, uh, checks and balances, safety. Every there's some companies where they're off, and there's some, there are people that get paid massive amounts of money to organize and strategize how a a company or a factory or an assembly line is supposed to be put together yeah. and flow. We did not have that. Mm -hmm. We we mm -hmm. just got that, and I hope, I hope it works out. We we are we are yeah, giving any of us. Yeah, it's so Liverpool. We, we are hoping. Into, uh, 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 it's just like when, I mean, I'll, I'll compare to compare. It to, when I'm going into management positions, they give free options. You either they want to either sustain what they already have, which is make sure it continues in that way, or rebuild, restart, employ new people to get it started, or just try and tweak what we already have. We did not have anything functionable. It's Nothing. tear down, start up. At the end of last season, Liverpool we did. manager, Liverpool manager worked into something functional, sustained, improved. We are, okay, tear down, start again, and let's go. That's where okay, we what are. About, what about Maresca then at Chelsea? Ma Maresca at Chelsea? Yeah. Okay. Most of the players he has, were all from last season, right? They, they were under that's very the same bad thing. He, he, he walked into a dysfunctional team, but right. look at Chelsea now. Chelsea okay. now, it's only five games in. Bro. It's only five, five games. games. I guarantee in. you. Oh my god, man! So what? what you, you think Chelsea? Play. You think Chelsea? You think Chelsea is gonna um, make top four? I think they will. Yes, I, I think don't they think will. So you think Chelsea is gonna I, finish above I us? Think, I, I think. Uh, based they, on I right now, I would have to agree with Ken on that one. I think they will. Yeah. Okay. If if they if they keep everybody fit, but I mean they have like five different Always first teams. Always remember, to, I mean, Ken, Ken, what do you mean if they Ken. keep everybody fit? No, 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 no. no. If, if for a long time, you know what the English football is. It's a marathon. It's not a sprint. It ain't that way. Some teams start so well. We'll see. Remember we'll see. Brighton. Look at the Brighton that beat us. Look at the, the last two games. They have struggled. It ain't that easy. Live, man, man, if not because Arsenal are stupid, they should have won that game today, and we all know that fact. They had yeah, massive on the ropes. Fucking see what I mean? Out. See what I mean? This is what I'm saying. Football is like, like this. It's a marathon, not a sprint. It's completely and different. And has successfully lowered your, your expectations. No, you know, expectation, like, no, man. You I know what it is? And this mid season, mid Ken, do you know my expectation this season? Again. You're Ken, my, I'll tell you my, Ken, I'm going to tell you my expectations. Medi exactly, mediocrity. My, expectations, oh, my, expectations, <laughs> my expectations from Eric Ten Hag and this players, this is uh, top four and two trophies is my expectation. Two. Top four and two trophies is what I expect this season with this new structure. Mark my word, that's what I want. Anything less is a failure to me.
Who drove we, are, we, are, we are Manchester <laughs> United, and we should be competing in every trophy with the squad we have, rotational. We have good, good thing. We don't have too many injuries. We have people coming back. We should be able to compete on all fronts. Top four and two trophies should be the minimum from this season. That's where I stand. Okay. That's good. When when are you looking to look? We we need to we need to qualify for Champions League. Without um, a doubt, that's so, not even so, a thought. No, so no, to buy players next next season to invest, we need to have a, a decent amount of revenue, and we yes. get that through the Champions League. Yes. So by not qualifying for the Champions League, uh, we are gonna lose two oh, years of worth of sustain, you know, fairly significant revenue. Oh yeah, I'm 100%. sure Ten Hag's. Um, Goal is, or, or even Ineos's goal is that we get into a Champions League, we qualify. So at what must... point in this season do you, are you willing to pull the plug? Like so I said, there's, there's two we, points we in the, in the, in the, in the, the yeah in the Champions League project. There, there, there's, there's two key points. Yeah. That goes, it goes back to what I said. First miss is one of those, and the second half of the season, whenever it becomes not um, mathematically possible to qualify for Champions League anymore, I think those are going to be the two key points. And we've wasted our season. Ball. Then we've wasted it. It's another. It's, this season is going to be another write-off. If well, we so then, do you do you believe long. right now? Well, um, do, 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 do yes. you believe that with what we have yes. right now? From what I've seen, that... from what I've seen, and this is a continuation. No, no, no. no, no, no. I was going to say, based on play... what we have right now, do you think that we can legitimately be in Champions League next season? Yes, I think I think we've got a good squad. So then, would you agree it... with the assessment then that you have to then okay say, like I said, at two points, Christmas. If it doesn't seem attainable, then you make a. a you make a change necessary. And then a second point is in the second mm. half of the season, at that point then, okay, if it's no longer mathematically possible or the board believes that we're not going to make it, then then you go for that. Do you believe that those are the two times when you do it then? Um, if it's mathematically not possible um, then and the season's written off, then what's the point of keep uh, changing Ten Hag at that stage? You must just keep him and... Uh, uh, because then, see the rest of the season. Point, I think I think if we want to save this season, we're gonna to have to make a change before well, Christmas. The reason well to go off to um, what you're saying before then with that, if it's not mathematically possible, you write off like yeah, you write off the rest of the season, then you know what? You could bring in that new manager at that point or whoever it's gonna be, and you tell these players right now, you prove to me right now why you should still be at this club. True, make a good point. I, I mean that's that's one way you could do it. I, I personally wouldn't Choose that preference. I think so, so, that so, we need to save the season. We need to save the season now. We need to qualify for Champions League for next season, so, so that ben, we can get the revenue and buy the players and strengthen our squad in the right way. What are your expectations? I think season, we have to we, qualify. We have to get minimum top four, and we don't look like we're getting anywhere near that. After five, with the current style of play, even this possession-based play that we're seeing, I'm not seeing enough to get us top four. No. Would you be satisfied with a Europa um, Cup championship? We're not winning Europa. No, yeah. I want well, Champions I'm, League qualification. Well, that'll give us Champions League qualification. They're all auxiliary. Europa, the Champions League qualification the... is what is what we need to be going for. We can do that by winning the Europa. Season. Europa. Yeah, but okay. not not from not from some back route. I mean, we need to be. That's a back route. We need winning the playing. Europa League is a back yes. route. We we did it under Jose. No, but I'm but saying what Jose. I'm saying is that we, Joe, you're not listening. We need to be in top four. To, and we need to be playing good football against some of the good teams. And I'm, I need to see convincing performances against the top teams. Okay. Not teams not that are in wait, wait, wait a minute. You just, added, you just added another one. You started off with just making top four. Now we got to make top four and we got to be playing saucy so, football. So, how, how so if we think, can make top no, no, four no, without no, saucy no, no, football, no, do you no, still no, want to no, out? No, no, no. no sorry. If we you're, make you're, top four without saucy football, do you still want to out? Sorry, you keep adding these adjectives in. To play, this to be is... in top four, you've got to play good football, and you've got to be winning or Not at least playing good football against top teams to be in the top four. Make a good. Do you point. not agree that? With that? That's not, necess that's not necessarily that true. Good you can you can stick it out the park and make top four. <laughs> you can stick it out. We did it. I, I think I think we did I it with you, Jose. You can't give we, Arsenal, we, 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 Liverpool, we finished Chelsea, second place. And City good games. You're not going to be in top four. We can stink it out. And beat those guys if we wanted to. Guys, if we did now, that, let, would you be happy? Top four. Let's just look at the top four positions okay. now. You've got Arsenal, you've got Liverpool, you've got Man City. We're not, <laughs> that's three places gone. Right. So, wait, already. so, the, so then, you've got Villa, got, Spurs, United, 
Chelsea, Newcastle fight Chelsea, for that fourth spot, Newcastle, right? Yes. Okay. So and we cannot go to that. The teams you've just mentioned now, Tim, mm. if we play them next weekend away mm. from home, mm. are no, we going to play them Old Trafford? We play Old Trafford. No, we'll no I'm just saying. Away, mm. I'm just saying away from home. Any mm. of those teams? Are mm. we going to beat the, any of those teams? I don't know yet. I we we have say. a chance to be. We can beat anybody, bro. We can beat anyone. It's a mindset. You okay. must have lost. You, hey, Ken, Ken must have lost money in the FA Cup look, final. Guys, this guy. I know Ken lost some money in the FA Cup final, man. I know he did. And he's mad. That's why, he, that's why he's upset it's at Ten Hag. It's not consistent. That's why we, we, beat, we beat City in FA Cup final and then we get hammered or we get uh, bossed by Liverpool. Okay. And all I'm saying is we, are, we have the ability to City, beat them. The second game against City, we'd look nothing like the team that played in the FA Cup final. So that's where's the consistency? The the community showed that's on Rashford. Two sitters, that's Rashford right there. Ganacho <laughs> yeah, did his job. It this when, is, it comes down to not taking your chances. Done. The manager Done. put forth tactics to give Rashford the opportunity to see the game out. He did not take those opportunities. Why would you now blame the manager? This constant movement of uh, the goalposts has got to stop when it comes to Eric Ten Hag. Okay, let me quickly ask you. David, so, so if you're going to rely on a couple, on, rely on a couple of chances for Rashford to score, and he doesn't take those chances, we blame him. Because yeah, I know Rashford's not a great player, but, he's but he's not we have to be creating more chances for others to have an opportunity We're to score constantly as well. Scared, and that's what good teams do. Him. On a plate for him. On a doesn't plate. matter, but we can't just rely me you would have on the slim me probability. You. We're, we're relying on low prob probabilities here by saying we expected Rashford to score those two chances. Twice? Come we should on, be creating bro. 10 or 15 chances so others can against, score. Other, other good teams. Right? Team, when, we, when we were winning Premier League consistently under Ferguson, our defenders mm. were scoring. Every right. single player right. in the team it was, was scoring. Was, the, was now we're relying different. on a striker. I want you to understand something okay. right now. We're, okay, look, yeah, at, yeah. look, at, look like, at City, right? Look at City look, and Arsenal. No, and Liverpool. forget City. Look at Arsenal. Score? Look at Arsenal. They all Arsenal, score. Arsenal only had two big chances today. Two. They almost won that game with two big chances. Are you looking? Can you imagine? I'm sure. I'm sure there's some yeah, mad yeah, but, Arsenal yeah, but, fans out there yeah, looking yeah, at today's game and be like Arsenal. The difference is, if that Arsenal, the, the, the team we played, the Palace team we played yesterday, had it been Arsenal, they would have blown that team away. And that's the difference. Didn't Arsenal just play new, new recently, just recently? Against, yeah, they drew, they drew against, um, I can't remember what team it is, but they, they drew, yeah, that happens. But they drew against they Atalanta generally... and they drew against... Uh, normally, yeah. normally, no, no, normally, they blow teams away. They, they right. win comfortably. But that, yes. we, we lost. One player misses a big chance. Oh, that's why we lost the game. No, 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 no. Yeah, no, they drew no, Arsenal no, 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 with no, no, Brighton. No. Okay, let yeah, me let me no. say this. This is this is really, okay. The FA Cup team that is also is a different team that played the Community Shield Man City. We had Amrabat, we had this back, this this is a new team. Rashford is on 350 a week. None of us on 350 a week that I know of. If we had that chance, if you could remember it, we would have scored that goal. But he missed it twice. It's not about blaming it on one striker. That's his job. He's paid to put the ball in the net. I also he's want to win on something. So, so hold, we on, can hold, lose hold, 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 because... hold on, hold on. He didn't score. Ganacho came in and scored. We didn't defend. We had um, Pelestri as a defender. And they equalized. And we got the penalty shoot that game done. So how can I not say if Bradford had not scored his chances, we won't win that game? That's what I'm saying. We have to start holding players accountable for fucking up. It's too much of... It's the, no, you're there. You're paid. Put the ball in the FN net. That's all you do. Put it in the net. You can't do that. You know what I mean? We can't keep saying it's the tactics. No. Put the ball in the net. It's just like they pay Ronaldo to score. He does his job. They pay Benzema to score. They put the ball in the net. They pay Rafa to score. Put the ball in the net. Gets, That's oh, your job. Yeah, right in the back. We can't keep on saying the tactics. That, if you remember that goal against, that chance against City, it was on a plate. Empty net. Bro. He, he missed his chance. So... Who are we going to blame? Ten Hag for telling him, oh, pause it. No, he's been in the game for 10 years now. He's not a kid anymore. It's, it's, we got, we got to stop. We need to start saying this. Yesterday, Bruno was a mess. He should have been pulled off. He was an embarrassment yesterday. He got worse in the second half. He should have been taken off. So, That's on Ten Hag quick question. yesterday. Quick question, Tim. Yeah, okay, it's on Ten Hag. So I think a lot of people think Ericsson had a better game than Bruno. Yes, but yeah. he did. 
Ericsson got hold of, not Bruno. Rashford has bad games and he makes lots of misses, but he still plays and starts every game. I agree. Who's that he, didn't start, he didn't start the last game, though. I and we agree. looked a lot better. He didn't start Crystal Palace, no. But last season, he was starting every game, even yeah. when he was playing. Yeah, he was. Yep. 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 That, that, is, that so, is Ten Hag's fault. And if Ineos decides to make a move because he keeps making decisions like that, I'm, I'm absolutely 100% behind that decision. Okay. Bim, I mean, let me go to... Based the, on him uh, not uh, playing the right players. Right. Now, so yes, based, not based the right on players. him not selecting the right players, you're happy for him to be sacked, but you're not happy for him to if, be sacked if, based on the style of football he's playing. I liked what I saw on Saturday. I liked what I saw on Saturday. Yeah. Devin, what are your expectations this season? Before the season started in August, with everything we signed, what are you expecting from Ten Hag this season? This team, what do you want them to achieve? As I said before, Champions League qualification, either either by top four or Europa League. Okay. What else? It's a reasonable man. I I said, like, that's it. It's Champions League or sack. That's it. That's a reason. That's the reasonable man. That's a reasonable okay. man, right there, Mister Fortress. What are your expectations this season from everything we bought think... and transferred players in? What do you want from this season? What are you to be relegated? <laughs> hey, hey, hey! Let's be serious. So, um, I think everyone, everyone would like top four. And, okay, uh, you know, a trophy. Not everyone. You but, as the, the, a fan. No, no, you, no, Mister Fortress. Think, what do you yeah, want? Yeah, no. no. All United fans will will take that. But the problem is, the reason why we're saying get this guy out now is because we do not think that this guy would be able to achieve this that target. He's way off, guys. He is way, way so, he's so far I, away saying, from achieving that target. Can, and, can and the risk. Mr. Fodger, what do you expect? Not what everyone is. I'm, I'm coming to it. I'm, I'm coming okay. to it. And that's why, that's why I'm making this decision now because I know that this, <laughs> or I think that this guy would not get us to that promised land. Right. Therefore, this season will be another write-off. And I don't want to go through another season where we win the Carabao Cup and then we go, okay, yeah, and then he gets sacked. Yes, we, yeah. what have we gained then? We failed, basically. Right. So, yeah, to answer your question, top four and a trophy, but this guy okay. is not top good enough. Top four, trophy. Everybody wants top four and a trophy. Mr. Mr. Strict, what do you want from this season? As Mr. Strict, what are your expectations as a United fan? From August yeah. to May, what do you expect from the players we have, the transfers we've made? What do you want? Top four and a trophy, but we have to get into that top four playing with style. Okay. Not just like scraping results. Just like Vim yeah. said, I agree. Yeah. It takes good football to get there because you have to beat certain teams to get to the top four. Okay. I think top Joe four. would be happy with 15th place and <laughs> Europa League qualification, right? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you're only going in fifteen. Listen, listen. I'm, I'm, I'm. I'm <laughs> I'll, I'll wait. <laughs> wait a minute. How are we? So, uh, what's the goal differential? <laughs> Minus twenty four. <laughs> and we we win the Rio, okay. Rio, okay. Europa okay. League, okay. and then I play come shit on, football come on. next season again. Come on, come on. Let's be serious. If it was like minus five, I'll give him another chance. But if minus twenty four, obviously, he has to get sacked. <laughs> no. <laughs> 50 Man position boys, is the defense needs to be hold, yeah yeah that, 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 no <laughs> minus 20, um, minus 34 uh, minus 20 it doesn't even matter if that happens minus obviously something enough, something 10. crazy has happened to our defense yeah. if it's minus because it doesn't okay so according to Ken and Vim it doesn't look like we're going to be scoring a lot of goals this season so if we're not going to be scoring a lot of goals we damn sure better not be conceding a lot of goals it's also so, it's very it's it's very possible for that to happen because i mean yeah, you'll be yeah. scraping by these teams by the the teams that are not in the top half by like one goal wins and then you play some of the big guns and you're losing by three four goals that has yeah, it starts to add up yeah. yeah yeah so we go spurs next sunday at old trafford spurs won this week they haven't been firing I don't know where they are in the league. I, I can't remember where they are so far because I really they're, they're, they're really... one position ahead of us. One position ahead of us, right? Well, actually, we're we're tied. We're tied on points, but they have a better goal differential. Shocking. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. So we are now. We've just gone to the one hour mark, so we're now in injury time. Vim, what can what are you expecting from Man United Spurs next week? Old Trafford. Um. You could find a predicted score. Coglu is, uh, is well, I I think they're probably, is it, sorry, is it away? Old Trafford. Old Trafford. Oh, sorry, Old Trafford. 
I don't, I don't think it makes a difference anymore anyway. Um, I think their style of football is slightly better than ours. I think their manager is much better than ours. Um, I think they're more dynamic and fluid compared to ours. Um, we might have a bit of possession in parts and look good and Joe will be happy and everyone else will be happy. But <laughs> I think if it, it's going to be, you know, it's going to be firing blanks again, I think we're going to lose. Oh, I'd want us okay. to win. I want us to win, but I feel like we're going to lose. Right. Score All prediction. Right. Let, Score let prediction. It. I don't know. Two one. I mean, I, it really depends who turns up on the day, right? Might not even <laughs> score a goal. Yeah. Uh, know, score, maybe one let nil. Me, let me, could have, let it me could s- be one nil to Spurs. Let me swing to a USA. Uh, Devin, Man United Spurs next weekend. I was really hoping you come to me last because I still haven't decided. Because I I agree with him. I don't know which Man United is going to show up on the day. Right. I, if I if I if they show up on the day, I actually think that we'll probably win one nil. One nil. Okay. Pretty yeah. Simple. Richard, Man United Spurs Old Trafford next Sunday. Um. Draw. Draw. Fair enough. Yeah. Smallers. Mr. Forrest, Mr. Fortress. One one draw. Mm-hmm. One one. You, you well, you, you never know with this guy. Do you? It's you the Fortress. It's getting... Old Trafford. It's your Tim, Fortress. But it's true though. It's true with this fraud in charge. You don't know what you're gonna get. It could be three nil. It could be. You could. Uh... We could win three nil. We could lose three nil. That's just. This is. This is the team we support. Right. I, I don't. I can't support a team that's. You know, yo, 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 team like that. I mean, I don't know what the score is going to be. Pass. I don't know. I just don't know. Right, right. That's fair enough, Joe. No, 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 no. We're not going to let him get away with that. He doesn't get to slander Elton Hag for an entire week, right? No, 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 no. You need to make a decision. So. Next week, when we have this conversation, we're gonna bring you to trial. All right, we're gonna get you on the on the witness stand. All right, we're gonna need you to explain okay, yourself. Okay, two one United. Right? Two one United. Okay, okay. Let's Look say, at this guy. United. Look at this guy. Okay, okay, okay. Um, I am gonna go with um, man. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say I'm gonna say two one two two one United. <laughs> Two one United. <laughs> no, 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 no. Whoa, whoa. I'm just trying to decide how many goals we're going to score. What are you talking about? All right, all right. Fair you know, I'm, I'm just. Going, I'm, I'm going. I'm going three one United. Wow. Three one. If if Postecoglou plays us the same, if Postecoglou plays us the same way he has been playing with the high line, and we play them the same way we play Crystal Palace, it's three one. Are they in Europe? Are Spurs in Europe this season? Are they got European games this week? They're like in the conference. I think they're in one of them. Conferences. Because Europa League is no more Thursdays anymore. We are playing on Wednesday. Correct. Yeah. So it's Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Uh, because of the whole re-change of the whole thing, it's no more guaranteed Thursday games on Europa League. We are playing on a Wednesday against FC20. Anyone anyone FC. comfortable in that result? I mean, Devin, do you think you could beat Didn't FC20? Didn't Hag manage FC20 in the past? He did. He did, yeah. He did? He did. Yeah. He did. Oh, I think no. he did, yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, I, think he, I think he won the league with them, too. Did he? Yeah. No, it That's... was Steve, Steve McLaren. Steve McLaren won the league. Oh, then. McLaren. McLaren. It was Steve McLaren, yeah. But so I actually think that a lot of Spurs the changes, are in Europe. That, Europa. I was gonna say I think a lot of the changes that were made yesterday were made with the Europa League in mind. He wasn't yeah. assistant because coach, I sorry. really because I really do believe that was part <laughs> of the reason why you saw Ericsson in there. Um to give some other players rest, much needed rest. Because I, I still have a very like big feeling that Ten Hag is going all out for the Europa League, kind of like what Mourinho did a couple of years ago. Because to, I mean, is that an easier route to Champions League than top four? Well, yes. I mean, you know, I, I'm actually going yes. to, I'm I'm going to agree with Joe on this one because the thing that I think a lot of us will agree on this: this team seems to be more of a cup team than a league team. And you play less fixtures in, in this than you do in the in the other competition. You go, you, you can show up all out for these. We've seen it all the time. We saw it in the FA Cup, sort of in the Carabao Cup, and then they go out in the league. And it's, I don't know if it's because it's such a long season or whatnot, they do not play the same. So I just I just have a feeling that we're going to go out there and we're going to smash 
20. I, 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 I really believe that. But what I don't what what I what I'm so afraid of is a repeat of what happened with um what's it called where we beat up seven nil and come out on the weekend and then like what happened. Right. No, no, it's not that. No, no, it's not that. You know, it's not that I don't believe it. Is I feel highly uncomfortable hearing it. Yeah, that's that's all it is. I feel I just I'm just highly Bim, uncomfortable. Uh, Bim FC twenty Europa League on Wednesday evening. Mm. Why? What do you expect? Is it is it? Do you think we could beat them? I think that game's away. I think. Correct me if I'm wrong. Well, they they beat uh, another team uh, just recently five 0 They're fourth in the league, and Ten Hag did uh, um, coach them. It's home. The it's home. He was an it's he was an assistant coach. Yeah. yeah. Ten Hag was an assistant coach at FC Twenty hmm. in okay. his early days, two thousand six to two thousand nine. But yeah, they beat another team five 0 in that same league. I don't know. Let's see how it goes. I hope we do win. I want us to win, but I'm just not convinced with this coach. Okay, Mister Strict, Richard, FC Twenty, Old Trafford, Wednesday uh, night. We'll win two 0 Two 0 Mr. Yeah, Fortress, I think, I think Mr. Fortress, they're coming to your hometown, FC Twenty. Yeah, it's at home. Yeah, we should, we should win that one. We, I say should, we should win. We should. Yeah. There should be no excuses. Yeah, there right. should be no excuses. All right. When I question time, any questions? Yeah, I want, we... I want this one first. Go on. So, for those who want Ten Hag out, Ten Hag out right now, who can we realistically get right now that will make sure that we finish in the Champions League places? Two calls available. Oh, yeah, he is available. Yeah, there's a reason for that. What's the reason? Why? Because the... he's anyone else took a look at him once. Anyone else mm-hmm. took a look at him, and they said, "Nah, that's it." I think it was the other way around. And I trust him. He said no. He said no. Didn't 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 Tuchel refuse the job? I think they're yeah. already doing the. Um... When they were doing the examinations of Ten Hag, he turned United down. I can't remember if it was. I think he yeah. turned United down. Like he does want to be the situation right. They dictate who he wants or somewhere along those lines. That he's come from that structure with Chelsea. He's not going into another structure. And I think he said we haven't got our house in order yet. Somewhere. So then, would okay, we, so so, so listen, listen. Okay, so but listen to that though. You're asking for a guy that wants the same structure. That you fault Eric Ten Hag from having last season, when any else is saying no, this is how we want things done, and we've been asking for that as far as administratively, from the from the front office to have a design, a plan. This is how we want to play. This is the kind of caliber um, players that we want. We wanted people making those kind of decisions because Woodward wasn't doing that. We now have that, and we have a manager that's able to uh, get down with that. But now we're calling for a manager that rejects that. We don't know the full. Mister Mr. Fortress. Oh, now we don't know the full. No, we we don't know the full. We're not in the room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. So, so let me come in. Right, so go let me come in. So, let's look at Liverpool again. Going back to Liverpool. Do you know that Liverpool um, Anna Slot uh, is was actually Liverpool's third choice. Third choice. Third yeah. choice. Manager. Wow. Yeah. So, Ineos obviously didn't do the. Their due diligence. They all went. They, you know, they went straight for um, um, what's it called, uh, Tuku, and for some reason it didn't work out. They panicked and offered ETH a contract. I don't, no, 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 no. So you, let's, you, let's, okay. let's, no, no, no. Strike that from the record. Uh, there was no evidence that any of us panicked. Well, this, and... But they did. They did. So, they did. so they were in your sweat interview with the coaches around. at the mm. end of last true. season. Very true. You do yes. know that, right? They yes, were they, he, yes, they were. Coaches. Which they and should. They find and I don't fault them for that. That they wanted, so then therefore they took a risk and a gamble to go with right. yeah. and Ten right. Hag again. But so they were looking to get rid of him. Wouldn't the gamble be adapting Tuchel if he was not down with their structure? Wouldn't that have been the gamble? I think they're because sticking with a manager that they know. And so, so, so it's, it, there is yeah. there is things called uh, there's a thing called negotiation, right? So a manager has his expectations of what he wants when he joins a club, right. and the, and the organisation also has their expectations of what they want him right. to coach. So the two have to meet so in the, the middle. first stage of the negotiation. They did not see eye to eye because Tuchel wants certain things and he's not prepared to give that. 
Tuchel is out, still out of work. He might, he, there's people um, that Ineos knows, that knows Tuchel, that will be having a conversations to try and work and negotiate or work out a deal. Can we come to some type of arrangement? So therefore, there could be a second, third, fourth conversation whereby Tuchel may say, I'm willing to make these compromises uh, and take on this job. Um, and I think that could potentially happen. And I th- and we've seen that he is a potentially, the, well, he's let, a good coach. Let, let me ask you a question. If Jurgen mm. Klopp was available and Manchester United were having talks, initial talks with him, and if Jurgen Klopp asked for the same things that Tuchel was asking for, do you think any of us would have told him no? I don't know. We don't know. We, don't, we, we can't, yeah, you can't really answer that. Richard, I see you over there, bro. I need Richard to answer this question. Oh, man. We don't know. Listen. No, no, okay. but let, me ask, let me ask you the question. Let me flip the question back on you, right? If, mm-hmm. if, if Ineos felt that Ten Hag was a good coach, right? If Klopp was in charge, right? Do you think they'll be interviewing coaches behind Klopp's back if they really thought he was a good coach, like they did with Ten Hag? No chance. I think, it, I think good it makes really. sense... Th- I, I think it makes sense as an organization to always have cover. You okay. don't want to get caught with your pants down. And yeah. I don't fault every single one of us right now, right, are all here having to chat about Manchester United. All of our bosses could be looking for our replacements right now. Mm-hmm. And if our bosses feel that we are not performing at the level that they feel, we cannot fault them for it. Mm-hmm. If our bosses publicly. feel not publicly though, they won't do it publicly. But I don't think I, Hag, I don't think Ten Hag was very it, public. He was very public. Everyone knew that Ineos were flying. It was he was like the talk of the a, town that Ineos were it flying was a talk, around Europe. It, is it, it, to this this is it. This is it right here. Right? These reporters are going around, they are paying top dollar for information that's coming out of Old Trafford, man. It's hard mm-hmm. it's for so this bad. team to keep our internal stuff uh in, in internally so that that and that's something that we've that's an issue that we've had for years okay everything hog didn't start that that culture um and Ineos, i would hope are doing something to uh, uh fix that right it is not it is not everything hog's fault the media in england love to talk about managers getting sacked at manchester united Oh my God! It's like the national pastime. I you guys, have a question. So let me let me ask let you me answer Devin's question. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me, go on, let go on, me, uh, go on, Ken. Now I'm just going to ask answer Devin's question. Who would go I on. take? So yeah, I who would, would you go take? For, so you, you, Richard mentioned Tuchel. He's an option, but then you've got yeah. Ruben Amarim. Amarim. Ruben Amarim. Ruben Amarim. Amarim. Rings a bell. Rings a bell. Where isn't is isn't he still? Sporting. I think he's a sporting, sporting manager. Right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But, but he, so... he may he may have turned down t- turned down Liverpool, but he'll he'll it'll be very hard for him to turn turn that Man United because Sporting have a history with Manchester United football club. So he will leave let's face it. Up. Let's face it. Man United managing Man United is a lot bigger than managing Liverpool. That's it that's is. Sure. But, yeah, uh, and, and, and Man United have has a chance. It's more sustainable. They're more stable than us. No, but yeah, yeah, Man United, he has, he's a younger coach. He's only like 39 or 40. Mm. He has the opportunity to be the one that takes Man United to the to the promised land, to, mm-hmm. the, to where we need to be. Ruben Amory, Who? the sports. Oh, sports. yes. He was actually yeah. Liverpool's he's, number he's one. He's very good. Yeah, yeah he's number, good. No, number two yeah. choice. Uh, yeah, it was Xabi Alonso and then Ruben Amory, and he turned them down and then they went for slot. He's a very good, very good coach. Yeah. Well respected okay. in Europe. Any so more questions? Have, so you think you think that he would we'd be able to convince him to leave sporting mid season to come to United? Heck yeah. Why not? It's a good question. I mean it's a good question, but yeah. you know, you until think you about ask, the, you just, I mean the money would do the talking, right? The wages that they would offer him. I think it's uh, sporting is, you know, a lot of players from Swing always see Manchester United as a as yeah. a, a, a good oh, mind you, move. We, yeah. you do understand we have to finish career. But, you do understand we have to finish paying Ten Hag too, right? Yeah, I know. I know why, why are you guys that's... talking about spending money and doing all of that, replacing coaches and everything? Well, bringing I, I in think new it was staff a mistake. To, to be fair, because I asked the question. I did ask the question. That's why. Why is no one talking about Deserby? Yeah, so I was going to mention that as well. So there's a list of elite coach. Why is he not being... Yeah, I've got a list of available coaches out there, by the way. 
Yeah, he's he's the list list to the yeah Zidane, yeah. Zidane is available. He doesn't want it. Yeah, Allegri is available. Hansi Flick, mm-hmm. uh, De Zerbi, Pochettino, Conti. Yeah. Flick is at Barcelona. Is he gone? Yeah. Pa- Thomas Pochettino Tuchel. Pochettino's at the US national team as well. Yeah, Poch- 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 Who, who's Gen- Gennaro? You guys would have taken Poch? You guys would have taken Poch? No, no, I don't want no, Poch. No, no, no. no. Okay, no, okay, don't. okay. I just need to, you know, <laughs> see how far <laughs> gone we are. <laughs> We're talking about Pochettino. Who would you take, Joe, if, if Tanner got sacked tomorrow? Damn, Damn if he got sacked tomorrow? Zidane would yeah. be my choice, but I know he won't come. Zidane would be my first choice, but he won't take... He won't, I, he I, won't I, I honestly don't know he... because I feel like if he gets sacked tomorrow, right, it doesn't matter who we bring in, the rot is still there. Wow. So Hang would on you a minute. What, have no what, coach, rot, what rot are we talking about? Though we the rot that would allow for Eric Ten Hag to be sacked this early. Wow. That, the that's rot, what I'm talking the about. The rot is the Hang playing but, style, isn't it? Yeah, not the players. It's the, he's, the rot. He's it's the players. The how, he's, how he's getting what them to players? play? Sorry, sorry, yeah, sorry. Players sorry. Players system. Yeah. What players are you talking about? We have particular play Rashford. Um. Oh, come on! I, I would I would say Bruno could be Bruno needs competition. I think I think Bruno needs competition. Bruno needs to know. Bruno needs to come to work, knowing that there's somebody else that can do that his job. Take, yes, right now, he does not have that. And I think that's I why. Think that's, that's why. That's why. That's why Mount was brought in before he got hurt. But with Mount, I don't even Mount's think well, was history. Mount even. Gonna... I don't even, yeah. I don't even think Mount was that before he came here. You know, I I never Matt, saw Matt, Mount as somebody that could replace Bruno. Devin, not that's, a playmaker. That's, yeah, Is but he? that's a, Devin just made a very good point. So what about um Mount coming in to kind of um compete with Ericsson? I'm sorry, Bruno. Bruno, right? But why does ETH play both of them in the same game? Hmm. Good point. I can't answer that. I can't answer that too. Because Makes sense. I think it's because. Mount cannot do what Bruno does. That's why Bruno is doing well. You can you can have carelessness for ninety five percent of the game. It's the same reason why Ganacho was kept in the game. You got it, and uh, Ahmad was taken out. That so, and I've seen plenty of managers fall victim to the same thing at Manchester United. We have these X factor players. Who that one opportunity? You, you just around. need, yeah. And I feel he's done that for too long with Rashford, and he's done that too long with um, Bruno. But the thing with Rashford, he has legit people that can replace Rashford, where he does not have legit people that can do well, that. Bruno, Bruno, we we that play. No, no matter how you feel about Saturday, Saturday, we are poor without Rashford Bruno was on that poor. Pitch. Rashford came on yeah. as a centre forward. Then when he changed, he now went to the left. No impact. There was literally no. That's when the momentum switched. Chris Pasley did a smash and grab after because we yeah, couldn't hold the ball up any up front anymore. Because Zerzi was holding the the string together, like linking everyone. But when he came out, Rashford can't do that. That's not his game. Then when Rasmus came on, Rasmus who has not played a lot of games, he looks rusty. He goes to the middle. Rashford goes to the left. Nothing happened. It was. Christopher has now nearly stole the game. So hopefully, like Devin said, it must be uh, for the European game on Wednesday. Most of I'm just hoping that game is done. It's done. We can't go back to it. We can only move on. We got FC20 on Wednesday and we got the Spurs on Sunday. If we get three, the two good results for there, we keep it moving. That's all I want. Just get the result. Like Vim said, good football, good results, and we just keep it moving. That's all. It's not the too thing much is, to right? The thing is, I think we should have won against Crystal Palace. But Without when we had doubt. when when we had Rasmus and Rashford on towards the end, mm. we're trying to we're trying to you know clinch that game. Mm. But I still saw really slow play and going back to mm. defense. Mm. Where's the urgency to get that ball no, forward just, and yeah. get two strikers in the box yep. and create chances for them? Where was the urgency? It was it was just slow pedestrian play. I'm thinking he took off Ahmad. You know, at that as point, a coach, I think Ganacho was tired at that point. As a he was coach, I'd be desperate. To hoof that ball into the um, yeah. twelve-yard box and it's try and create a chance and try and nick a goal, we deserve yeah, and the win, and it did ben, not you, happen. You mentioned, yeah, you mentioned it after the game as well. That I did. Yeah. Yeah. Ten Hag was very happy with the point. Yeah, yeah. I thought like, used to do that. No, no, who said that? Who throwing said everyone that? in the last I minute. Know, he looked like he was. Happy he looked he was like he was. Ha- yeah. yeah, he was happy in the end. You know, we got time for one last question. 
Who wants to take the I have a question. question. I have a question. I have a question. All right. So speaking to some Chelsea fans, they all mm. seem really happy with Jadon Sancho and he's contributing. You know, he's getting assists, I think, every game he's played now. Mm, um, and he's, 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 he's penetrating on the left-hand side, which is where uh, Rashford would be playing for our team. So, you know, the fact is that Ten Hag could not make a talented player. I think Jadon Sancho is talented. Maybe he hasn't got a great work rate and he doesn't apply himself properly in training. But do you not think that he could have tried to salvage that relationship and and still keep this talented player for our for our side because you know, Jadon Sancho is doing well at Chelsea. Um, Cecily, what did you say? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Let, me go with, make... hold on. Let me go with Devin first. Devin, Sancho is doing well in Chelsea. We couldn't make him do well at United. Under three managers, Ole, Ragnick, um, Ten Hag, he still could not find a suitable... Remember, he was bought to play on the right. <coughs> we got him. No, I want to play on the left. Talk to me. All right. Let me, let me go on this one real quick. Everybody knows Sancho is a talented player. That was never the issue with Sancho. Right. The issue with Sancho was always his mentality. Right. Every single thing that you do at Manchester United is going to be scrutinized 10 times more probably. Well, I would probably two, or really say two three times more you do at any other club. 100%. He's not going to get the same media spotlight that he does at, Ch at Chelsea that they got at United. However, every time it's going to be mentioned now, they're going to have to mention Manchester United because it gets views and clicks like that. So we all know, yes, there there is the talent there. Let's see what happens when there's a little bit of adversity coming his way and come back from that. Because it's only two matches in that he's played now. Yeah, I think it's only two matches now. One assist. So I think it's two assists actually now. That second one wasn't really assist. They just passed but, it for the guy around. Again, it again, it's, it's, it's only registered as an assist. It's, on, it's only it's is only it, two is matches it registered? in. Is it registered officially? I don't think it's registered. Okay. okay. Well, like I said, it's only two matches in. Let's see what happens when he faces a little bit of adversity if it still continues. Okay, Mr. Fortress, follow up on that. <laughs> yeah, I think it's, uh, it's early days for Sancho. Let's not forget when Sancho came as well, he had the he huffed and puffed and um, it just went downhill after that. So let, let's see. Let's under see Ole, he went downhill under Ole, yeah. you know. Bloody yeah, you know. I, I don't think... The I, nicest I, I, guy on the planet. Sancho, <laughs> Yeah, Sancho's not a premier. I don't think he's built for this this country, man. The he's way, a German the, the way they, yeah, he's, the, the, I could the, be wrong. My but. question is, my question is more, not really about Chelsea. It's about is Sancho a better player, or can he apply himself better than Rashford on that left hand side? Could we have made no. it work with him? Mm, uh, no. Good oh, question. sorry. Okay. Um, no. No. No, I don't think so. You don't see no. more talent in Sancho than Rashford. No. No, no threats, I would, playing that way. goal threats in our forwards. Sancho is not a goal threat. He's not. I'm no, sorry. I, I, well, not. I think uh, Rashford okay, is like, not a goal threat. I, I, I will put it this way: right. if we say that, okay, if we say to Sancho, Sancho is a confidence player, right? If you say to Sancho, look, you're going to be the, the the main guy on that left. I think he has a potential. If we have a good manager that plays possession based football and you know tactical football and you know need, you know. Yeah, tiki taka football. I think he potentially could be there, but I still think you need comp he needs competition as well. But he just needs to know that okay, yeah, you're one of the people like you've got a chance of of being the first team player in that on that wing if you perform. But I think he never got that at United on the left. He was on the Ole, so, so the on thing the is right. right? And this, mm. this is why it comes down to management. He was frozen out for the whole of last season. He was sent away to go and play for well, Dortmund. Don't forget, he, he frozen played out. under he was pretty much frozen. He played he, under two That's fine. Himself. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Ragnik, you know, that that football was all over the place. But he was frozen out very quickly by Ten Hag. And I'm just thinking that for a, man, for a player that we um, chased for a lot of money, uh, we paid 74 million. We are now going to have a, a substantial loss on this guy mm -hmm. because uh, Chelsea had an obligation to buy him at 25 million. We're going to lose mm -hmm. 50 million on this player. Mm. We we had him and we froze him out. Mm. Didn't they also? Why pay can't the management? Why can't? Why couldn't we get him to to somehow work his way back into his team? Give Rashford some competition. That for me is poor management. Hey, we have to get the quick, best quick, out of these players. I know there's a weak mentality there, but Rashford has a weak mentality too. Quick question. If somebody came in with $25 million for Anthony right now, Vim, would you take it? No, I wouldn't. You wouldn't? 
No, because at managing a football club, you have to get value out of your players. Well, that's What's obviously going not going to happen with Anthony. Why not? Why not? Might happen with another coach. It's exactly. not good that's enough. He, he's, you he's might have enough. other coaches right, who can get the best out of the players. I don't okay. think Ten Hag can get um, the best out of his players. Okay, let um, let Mr. Fortes answer the Vim question of Sancho. I think I have. I've uh, okay. already. Uh, Richard. Yeah. I, yeah, he's, he's on the left hand. Do you know what? On the left hand side, Sancho could be a good player. I'm a big fan of Sancho, but I don't know if it was. It just didn't work out for him at the club. He's sometimes it's project. the environment. Yeah, sometimes it's the environment, but he's a yeah. better player. Let, let, let's be honest. Sancho is a better player than Rashford and um, Garnacho. Yes, but maybe Man United wasn't the right environment. Hey, and how before he joined that he should stay abroad. He should stay in Germany or go to Spain. Yeah. Rather than come to Premier League, I, I don't see him as I, I never I've never viewed him as an English footballer. No, but like uh, a foreign or South American, that's the type of football he plays. It's a shame that it's do not you, worked out. Yeah, but, but do you think it's uh, fair that it was wait, frozen? What, out? what is that? Do wait, you think it was what fair is that? that? It was frozen. Wait, out? What, what, what is about? what is that about him being English, not being English? What is it about him? Yeah, um, that doesn't make him an English footballer. Is it because of his creativity, his footwork? Yeah, yeah. Just, or, just, are you just assuming, like, are you just saying no, that English footballers no, just no, 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 naturally no. don't like, have that? No, it's just his style of play. Like, a lot of Man United fans misprofiled Sancho. They thought he was just a flying winger that just runs down the wings and cross. He was never that type of player. He wasn't. And even though Sancho, we fought for him to be a right winger, we fought for yeah, him yeah, to yeah, be that, on the right. He said, no, I'm going to play on the left. That's what Ole like. Uh, that's not what we no, meant to San, 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 Sancho's um, a playmaking uh, winger. If you look at his game, heat map, he, he, he plays on the left one, two, he plays on the right, then he cuts centrally. He, he, he's, he's more like a playmaker, right? And that's where we misprofiled him. So I think when he was at Dortmund, yeah, we misprofiled him. Yeah, we did. His, his, style of, his style of play, and even he himself said it. Sense of the coach, past. His coach, his coach, he said it. His, his youth coach, he said they had to scrap the whole, the whole um, um, uh, playbook for Sancho because mm. he wasn't playing like his peers. He was play. He, his style of play was more suited to someone that's been cultured abroad. So that's why what when uh, Kenneth said maybe he's more suited abroad. I kind of agree, agree with that. Yeah, at Chelsea, mm-hmm. M- M- Maresca has a style of play. Maybe that will actually suit him. But Ten Hag and now a chaotic style of play is not. It's not. But, but, but Ole couldn't find. Ole couldn't make him work. Oh, Ragnar oh, oh, couldn't oh. make him work. So no, 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 it's no, not no. just but Ten Hag. Tim, Tim, yeah, it's not Ten Hag. We didn't have a good style. Of, we had counter attacking football under Ole. Ranić, that was a disaster anyway. So it was a chaotic season. It wasn't just Sancho. Right, only the only player that played well that season was Cristiano Ronaldo. And the guy, look at it, and they well, they uh, he made mistakes, but okay, but out, the outfield player was Cristiano Ronaldo. The second season, he was frozen out by Ten Hag. Yes, the, partly it was down to Sancho, but I thought I think there was also some mismanagement on Ten Hag's part, right? So I think that United fans just need to just get it out of their heads that you know Sancho yeah. was probably. I don't think it was just a problem. I think the whole environment, the culture of the club, and everything that surrounded Sancho was the problem, not just Sancho right. himself. Right. And that's just the manager too, right? Yeah, to answer your question, um, manager, no. Joe, Joe, to answer your question, why you think um, we miss profile Sancho and the fact that he hasn't worked at United and in it, why we think we won't, he won't work in England is that if you look at the wingers in the Premier League and in England, you have to have that gal that Sancho has is very important, but you also need to be a lot more direct. Yeah. Yeah. He's got yeah. the gal, he's not direct. That's the thing. That's why I think he's... In, in other leagues, you don't have to be direct, but in yeah. England here, if you look at whether it's Diaz or even this guy, Chiesa that they've just bought from Juve, I know he hasn't played, but he's very direct. If you look at all Liverpool's wingers, all cities, they're all, they've got the gal, but they're also very direct. Don't yeah. you know? But Sancho's cool, not yeah. that guy to yeah. just get the ball he, and sprint. He and, he's yeah. not that. So... Mm. No, that's All right, Joe, Joe, round up the last the, the answer to Vim's question, please. Um, Sancho, I forgot the the original question. Is that uh, Chelsea? Seems the question to be doing well. gonna do well, is, is, it was um, there's quite a few parts of the question, but the fact that he was frozen out, 
we've played Rashford for a whole season and a half, who, or especially a whole season, who's pretty poor. Sancho can play on the left. He is playing on the left now. Could we not have, you know, made work him no. back into the team and, and play as competition for Rashford? Is it necessary for Tan Hag to be so stubborn and freezing players out? even for players that are talented and also losing considerable value on these players. I didn't like the way he froze out Ronaldo. Ronaldo is a goal scorer. Sancho is very talented. Ten Hag freezing out players and being stubborn. That's okay. So I, yeah, a few parts I, to it. I just really need to adjust to where you're talking about some of these players where you keep saying that they keep getting frozen out. Meanwhile, both of these players ran their mouths to the media about stuff that was happening internally in the club. You cannot do that. That's what happened. They didn't get frozen out because he just didn't like the way he walked and talked. They got frozen out because they violated and caused and, and brought dismay onto the to the locker room and to the club. That's why they have to go out. That's what Ten Hag has to be thinking about. That's what Ten Hag needs to be considering. What, what Sancho does to that locker room is a greater problem than how good he's potentially looking at Chelsea. I want him to be successful at Chelsea so that we can sell his ass and get him out the club. I'm don't, I already saw Sancho, bro. We saw him. He's not good enough for this team. Right, I'm not saying that he's not good enough to. Fit. I'm not saying Is he he's not good Russia? enough. Oh my goodness! <laughs> what did he do better than Russia? Joe, please carry side. on. We are on injury time. We got to shut down now. For, Go for what we're for what we're trying to do, I feel we can achieve it more. There, there's less to do for Rashford as a professional player than for Sancho to do. Rashford doesn't need to change his game that much for us to be successful. While Sancho has a much greater th uh, um, um, changes that needs to be made to his game for us to be successful, because if we do want those kind of wingers, that's what he has to turn into, right? We're not turning into Tiki Taka football. No, we, and even if you are, even if you are that kind of player, right? Because Ahmad is the same kind of player, but the thing is, Ahmad is more direct, and Ahmad is a goal threat. Those are two things that Sancho is not. Therefore, he should not come back to this club. I don't I, care. I, I dispute should... what you're saying, no, Joe. I dispute Please. what you're saying is, is really is, is really wide of the mark because Sancho, three seasons in, in, in a row, was the top one of the top three or top four goals and assists in Europe, right? So that whole talk about he's not a goal threat and he's not that's nonsense. That's I'm sorry, that's he's not a goal threat here, he's well, not no, a goal threat in I, England. I, 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 I want to go he's back to your point. I want to go okay. back to your point. Okay. I've just looked at the site. Sancho's registered two assists. So you're seeing one assist, but I'm seeing two assists here. I'll, right? I'll give you the two. Okay. I'll give you the two. Right. Okay. So, 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 so your, your whole point about stats and stuff, I'm, 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 I can just, I can refute it in two seconds. Right. When Sancho was frozen out, did you know that he was our second highest score, uh, chance creator behind Bruno, even though he was frozen out for a season? You forget, you, you forget these points. My my gripe is the environment was wrong for Sancho. But well, you're okay. saying you know he, he, he okay. doesn't score but, enough. Okay, let, let, let's quickly let roll the tape back. When United chased him for two years, he was chased as a right winger. Like something like we think we misdiagnosed, misanalyzed, did the wrong research on him. He was bought to be a winger. When we bought him, he said, "Sorry, Ole, I don't play right wing. I play on the left wing," which was already Rashford. That is when the whole playbook completely went left. From there, it was just downhill. Honestly, downhill after that. Because we chased him as a right winger. Why they thought he was a right winger, I don't know. That would, that would be Woodward and uh, Matt Judge. I don't know what they figured out. Sancho, Sancho is a sin of the past, just like Danny Van Der Beek, that we need to, the, the club needs to go to confession about. Okay? okay? We, need, we just need to wash our hands. Off of it, and just you know, it's Sunday. Let's just wash our hands off of it, and let's not ever bring it up again. Right, like the kid's gone. We have come gone. to the end of the show. Of very, very show. Hold, so, yeah, Donny van der Beek though. Didn't he play under Ten Hag? Didn't he play good football under him? Uh, in, no, he did in not. Ajax, what, did he? Sometime he in the in, past. Yes, in in Ajax, in Ajax, yeah. Yes. But okay. that was a different player he, when it came he, to Manchester United. He failed okay. under Ole, failed under Ragnik, failed under Eric Ten Hag. 
Yeah, before before you start putting that stink on Ten Hag, understand that Donny Ve- Mate, Van der Beek was sticking it up before already. Ten Hag got there, right? Donny Mate, Van der Beek was sticking it up before like, Ten Hag got like there. Your, it's like it's like there's a cult going on, and Ten Hag's the leader of that cult, and you got to believe all of but, his brainwashing. But, but, but he played under. I think a lot of people are, are falling for his crap. And what's the name of the What's the name of the cult you lead, Ben? Hey. What's the name yeah, of the cult you're leading right now? No, no, I, I, I'm stepping out of the brainwashing and you can't keep falling for his rubbish because he's papering over the cracks. No, no, but, and but, but he, him. giving him 600 million, right? You freeze out players, you lose their value, right? But on the, you, he was you're, on you're the basically Ole bringing two, the club into... What? He was on the yeah, Ole first. Yeah, I know, but just... On the Ole first. And Ole did not yeah. even rate him. Ole did not even play him. Then Ragnick didn't even play him. We all said, oh, he's going to get another chance. Eric Ten Hag just didn't rate him. I think at that point, uh, Van der Beek yeah, was. If you, if you separate Sancho from the YouTube is, videos, is not... you understand that managers don't rate him in England. It's it's that simple. If you separate Sancho from the YouTube videos that you see from Dortmund and whatever he's doing out there, but managers Maresca rates him highly though. Have you seen what Maresca? He's about? doing okay at Chelsea. Maresca really so rates him. Give said, it some time. Sancho, 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 yeah. Right. And if, if <laughs> Chelsea get in for 25 million, that's a that's a good deal. But they, I think they, they also paid like a loan fee as well on top of that. Yeah, I remember. Mm. Yes, that, you're right. Let's, let's see. Let's see Maresco take those compliments and transfer transform them into pounds at the end of the season. All right. That's what I want to see. Yeah. That's what I want to see. Yeah, that, that's how I know. That's saying. how I know Chelsea rates him when they go for but, him. Yeah. That's how I know. Right. Gentlemen, anyway, we'll I don't think we should buy any more Ten Hag bullshit. Oh, we, we have come to the end of the bullshit. show today. I want to bring a big <laughs> shout out to the UK crew who came out in numbers. Thank Vim, the analyst. Thank you very much. Mr. Strict Richard, thank you very much. Mr. Fortress came today. Thank you very much, guys. The US crew, our ambassador, global ambassador, Devin, and Mr. Solman, Mr. Positive, Fusion Red Army. Thank you very much. Have a great week. We could uh, resume this again on Wednesday after we have got some good results against FC20, and return back on Sunday when we have taken care of Spurs. All right, gentlemen, have a great and blessed week. Glory, glory. Well, you know, and and see you guys on the next one. <laughs> <laughs> Take care. Take care. Cheers, guys.